Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Great. Well, I kind of need prayer this morning. I'm an Oklahoma Sooner fan. <laughs> they forgot that they were supposed to show up last night at the football game. So it was really, really bad. So, Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. So let's pray. Father, thank you for, thank you for your goodness and, and just your sweetness to us. Thank you for, for an allow, allowing us the privilege to, to be your sons and daughters and to worship you and be a part of you. And, and we just give you the honor for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're, um, for me, this is kind of a fun season because we're not just Christmas, but we're into Hanukkah too. And so a lot of you guys are like, what in the world is Hanukkah? You know, I see this menorah thing and I was like, the Jewish people, they, man, those Jewish kids get like eight presents, you know, <laughs> one, one every day. And I was like, yeah, there's some perks, you know. <laughs> but we forget sometimes when we're going and, and seeing all this stuff that there's like stories behind it and you're like well what why why would you why would you even share about Hanukkah I want to share a little bit about Hanukkah and then I want to tie it into what the scripture says about it because it's so important to who we are and it'll help you understand when you see that menorah too up there that it's it's bigger and than than what you might think um you say well what was on it don't have nothing to do with Jesus actually I'm glad you asked that (laughs) right because in John chapter 10, verse 27, it said, verse 22, it says this. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. Okay, you say like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Do you know what the feast of dedication is? It's Hanukkah. John also puts it in perspective to where he says it's not just the Feast of Dedication, but then he names the date. He's like, it's in winter. And so Hanukkah is always on the on the um, 25th of Kislev. And so like I was reading a really interesting article about um, Christmas and how a lot of people think that Christ- Christmas is pagan and all this stuff and whatever, you know. I, I don't go into all that stuff. But the rabbis are saying, I really think that Christmas stems from, from the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah because there's a lot of things that Hanukkah go in with it too jesus is the light of the world is he not when is christmas day it's the 25th of december hanukkah is the 25th of keslev and so there's some similarities in in all those details i mean the main detail that we need to know is that jesus came and died for us and rose again that we can live in him but there's a lot of things that we can explore and say hey this is really cool so you're like well so what is hanukkah what were they celebrating what were they talking about well, it was back years and years and years ago, right? The um, Greeks had come in and they had taken over Jerusalem. And the Jewish people were starting to get integrated in, into the Greek and Hellenistic kind of culture. And so, so the Greeks went in and they said, you know something? We don't need the temple anymore. We don't need the worship anymore. So we're going to go in and guess what we're going to do? We're going to tear down all the stuff that's in there. And we're going to go into to the altar where the sacrifice is sacrificed. And we're going to sacrifice pigs on the altar. Now, number one, any, any Jewish person knows that the, the, the pigs are not kosher, right? And so, so they weren't, it was, what it was saying is it was something that was detestable, something that you can't, that you shouldn't have any part of. And they were taking it into the temple and they were slaughtering them, and they were sacrificing to other gods in the temple. Can you imagine that? I mean, it was a time where, where the people had gotten so far off to where, where, like, and it wasn't just the Greeks. It was like some of the Jewish people had gone and assimilated with them. So it was almost like there was a little bit of a civil war. And so in their own culture, they denied what they were really taught and what they really grew up believing. And how many of us in, in our lives today 
have that choice every day. What are we going to believe? What are we going to stand for? Are we going to identify with what the world has or are we going to identify with the kingdom of God and what God says about stuff? Right? It's a, it's a choice that we have. And so anyway, so there's this group. They're called the Mac, Maccabees. Right? The Maccabees means hammer. Right? Is this boring? No. Nope? Okay. <laughs> I was like, like, so here, here's the Maccabees. And the Maccabees, it's called the hammer. So, so here they go and they fight and they're like, you know what? This is wrong. This is God's temple. And for three years it's been defiled, right? And so they're like, we're going to go in and we're going to win this victory. Well, the problem was, it was about like Oklahoma playing LSU. <laughs> right? They were overmatched, man. It was like they were fighting like they had the, the Greeks had their elephants and their bows and their arrows. And it was like kind of kind of us going up against battle with pitchforks when they have tanks. Do you know what I'm saying? And so here they're like, you know something, it's for God and this is important and we're going to reclaim our heritage and we're going to reclaim what God has put in our lives and we're going to get our freedom back and we're going to get our temple back. And so do you know what? They go to battle and do you know what happens? They won. They won. They had a great victory. And so the first thing they did is they went back to the temple and they cleaned out where all those sacrifices had been 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 taken at the altar of incense, which is actually or at the altar of sacrifice. And then they went into to the altar of incense and cleaned that all out. And they went out to the lampstand and they only had one cruise of oil left. Now, to to Jewish standards, to Jewish regulations and scripturally. There's a certain process that has to happen for that oil to be used in, in, the, um, in the temple. So what they did was, was they had to wait. Like it was like eight days before they could get the, the next oil prepared. And they had one cruise of oil. Do you know what that meant? They could only drive their car for one day and go cruising. <laughs> no. You know what it meant? That's where Tom Cruise got his name, by the way. <laughs> right? No. So, it, so what they did was they said, you know something? We're going to step out and we're going to light it anyway. If it lasts for one day, at least we have it in one day, one day. So do you know what they did? They dedicated the temple to God. And they said, God, we give this to you. We surrender this to you. It looks impossible, but it was impossible for us to be here. It looked like there was all the odds were against us, but guess what? You got us here, so we dedicate this temple to you. And do you know what we're going to do? We're going to light this light, and we're going to watch and see what you do. Well, they lit it, and they come back the next day, and they're thinking, oh, man, we only had one cruise. What are we going to do? Now we're going to have this gap in, in our plan, and it's not how God intended it to be. And so they come back the next day, and do you know what happened? It was still lit and it was still burning. So they're like, it's another miracle. God, God's real. He's for us. It was a sign to them that, you know something, even though we went through all this, that God's still with us and he's alive and he's well. So they come back the next day, the third day, and you know what happened? It's still lit. They come back the fourth day. You know what happened? It's still lit. Fifth. Still going. Sixth. Still going. Still going. On the eighth day, though, that was just too much for God. Because, like, He can only do a miracle for, like, seven days in a row. So, no. What happened on the eighth day? Guess what? It was still lit. It was a miracle. And so, to this day, the Jewish people celebrate that because it's about liberty. Right? It's about the freedom that they, they that they brought, but it's also about dedication. How how we just aren't just um, dedicated to God, but God's dedicated to us. God loves us. God's for us. God wants to do great things in it and through us. And so, as as I was thinking about about Hanukkah and some of the stuff, I was just like, that is so exciting that that the King of the Universe chose a people, and He said, you know something, you're going to be my people. And guess what I'm going to do in and through you? I'm going, to, I'm going to change the world. And he has with the Jewish people. But guess what? You're joint heirs with them through Abraham, right? Because of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus. You, you are available 
to all the promises of Abraham, just like, like the Jewish people. And we all have one way to the Father now, and it's through Jesus, right? And so it's incredible for me when I think about that and think about um, some of the stuff. I was listening to a rabbi, because <clears throat> I, I kind of like, I, in, I enjoy some of the stuff that, that I can learn in this season. He was talking about, you notice like, Hanukkah isn't a celebration that just happens at the capital in Jerusalem or just happens in the temple or just happens in a political public, public place. But it's a holiday where every Jewish person takes the menorah and they set it out where everyone can visibly see it so that they can show them this is who we are. There's something special about me, but there, I serve a God that can deliver me. I serve a God who loves me. I deserve a God who does miracles that you would never believe. Isn't that incredible? And so they take that and they set it out. How many of us get kind of shy about being believers in Jesus? Right? I'm not telling you to walk up to a stranger at Walmart and say, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> unless God tells you to. Right? But, but what I am saying is, how many of us are so, like, we shrink back when they start talking, well, well, what do you believe in? Well, I kind of believe, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> you know? And we, what's cool about Hanukkah is because we live in such a dark area where people think that it's really dark, but the Bible says where sin abounds, grace super abounds. So the light... That we shine, man, it's not a dull light, it's not a dim light, it's a light that lasts and it lasts and it lasts and it flows out and it reaches all kinds of people. Even even when we don't understand what's going on, God's got a purpose and he's like, you know something, if you'll just trust me, maybe just love on that person. You don't have to preach to them. Amen. Right? Maybe just be around them. Like I, I get the privilege of being around some, some pretty rank cowboys and the, 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 there are some yahoos, man. Right? And you know what? I never once preached at them until they ask. But they always ask. Do you know why? You earn the ask. You earn the ask. Absolutely. You earn the ask. But when they ask, they want to know because there's something missing in their life. There's a void in their life. And they're like, why, why is this happening in my life? And why does that happen in my life? And I don't understand. How come you have peace and I don't have peace? How, how, come, how come all this stuff... Is great going on for you, or even when things crash around you, you still like are happy and you have a joy and you have a peace. How do you have that? Well, that's simple. That's Jesus. And you know something? You can have that peace too. And so we can live our light out, right? Not put it out, but live it out and let Jesus, who is the light of the world, live through us and shine through us with his love and with his goodness. And say, you know something? I may not have all the answers, but I know the answer. And his name's Jesus. And so, so I love that. It's also identity when, when you put that menorah out. We're really kind of poking the people in the eye and saying, look, you tried to kill us. Guess who's still here? You've tried to wipe us out. But guess who's still here? You didn't, you, you didn't want us around. But guess what? We're, we're still here. You know something? You don't control our destiny, but our Father God does. Amen. Amen? Amen? And so, I think as believers, we need to get a little bit of grit sometimes. And say, so, you know something? Jacob did. Man, he got to a point where he was so low, and when he met with, with the angel, he wrestled with him. He said, hey, I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. Right? Right? And so, how many of us are willing to get a hold of God? Or willing to get a hold of what God's called us to do. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm not doing anything. Yeah, you are. Every day you're stepping out. And you're called to that place where you're at. And you're called to that family where you're at. And you're called to a world out there that's watching you. There's no, no coincidence. You don't have to be a preacher to think that you're a minister. We're all ministers. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? We all have a purpose. We all have a plan. And God wants to work in and through us. And, and do great things to us, but we can get some grit about it. Hey, you know something? My God's bad, man. I mean, not bad, but, <laughs> you know, he's, he's tough. He's gritty, man. 
you can't do anything to me that God doesn't want done. So why would I be afraid of man? Amen? Amen. So one of the blessings that I really want to read is, um, it's from Hanukkah, and it's in Psalm chapter 30. And it says this, I will exalt you, O Lord. You lifted me up. You lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Isn't that kind of cool, huh? It's kind of a coincidence that all these things kind of flow together, isn't it? I mean, when you see the Bible, doesn't it just like blow your mind? Because like, there's so many different authors that God spoke through, but there's only really one author, and his name's God. It's our Father, and so so it's cool how all this stuff kind of flows together. But sing to the Lord, you saints of His, praise His holy name, for His anger lasts only a moment, but His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Ever, ever feel like God's mad at you? <laughs> Am I the only one who's ever felt that way? <laughs> man, I used, to, I used to feel like that a lot, man. I was like, what in the world? What did I do? And I, I, I've taught myself now that when, when I get to that point where I'm like, well, what did I do? I'm like... Oh, that's not the right thought that should be crossing my mind because it has nothing to do with what I do. It has something to do with what he does, what he's done. Mm -hmm. And so now I can say, hey, you know something? Hey, Daddy, I come to you boldly, Mm -hmm. right? Because I have favor with you because of the blood of Jesus and, and, and my conscience is clear. Not because I'm perfect, because as hard as it's to believe, I'm not. Ask my wife. Right? But because He's made me perfect in Him and through Him, and I have that peace and I have that favor, and now I can go up and say, Hey, Dad, guess what? It's me. It's your favorite son, James. And you know what He says? Yep, you are my favorite. The best looking, too. That's where I got it. If you don't like that, just ask Him. Right? Weeping may, in, may remain for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And, and that has several different meanings to me because I've been in places where I was weeping and when the night seemed really dark and when it seemed like there was no light and where it seemed like there was no hope, kind of like, like the, the Maccabees in, in their day. But I think there's a joy that not just comes in the morning, but as we're going through that process where we're weeping and we're hurting, when we have Jesus in our heart, there's a joy that starts bubbling up out of us. And we can find joy in every situation. Maybe it's a lost loved one, you know, and we're like, oh, I miss them so much and it's so hard. And like I lost my mom a while back and, and it was really hard. And there was a weeping in it. But, then, but at the same time, there was a joy because I know where she's at. And I knew that I was going to see her again. Do you hear what I'm saying? Or maybe all finances look bad. Or may, may, maybe all kinds of things are falling apart in your, in your life. And it's breaking your heart and you're weeping. But when you have Jesus in you, there's a joy that starts bubbling up and gives you hope. Because you know that the one who, who makes miracles, the one who made the light shine for eight days can still shine light on your situation. And then pretty soon the morning comes and you see the miracle that God brings into your life. Isn't that kind of cool? When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. O Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. In you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord I cried for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction? In my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me, O Lord. Be 
my help. You turn my wailing into dancing and you remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will I will give you thanks forever. Amen. And so we're as they're reading this blessing, I just can't help but think because it gives gives you kind of a picture into what their thoughts and what was going on in their life. Right? And and I just think of that. I was like, one of the things that, that the Jewish people do that I love, like on Passover, when you have Passover and you sit down for the Passover meal, you're you're to remember and what it what the Hebrew word for remember is like you actually like are back in that place. It's like you put yourself back in that place. Like like what was it like? to be in Egypt, right, as a slave. And then all of a sudden, the blood of the lamb comes across the door, and he's like, get out, boys, we're time to go, right? What was that like? How, what did that feel like? And so when I come to these, to these, um, to these holidays or to these um, festivals, or even like Christmas, right, what was it like that the world was so dark, that the world was without hope, and then God, in His grace, sent His Son, His only Son, and He was born in a manger. I mean, what was that like for, for the wise men? Can you imagine? They're coming to find Jesus. Or for, for the shepherds, they're in the field, and the host of angels come up, and they're like, whoa! And they're like, whoa! I mean, can you think of that? And so, so I try to put myself now into a place where when I'm, when I'm seeing the stories or hearing, hearing those stories, I'm like, I can just sit back and, and close my eyes and I can picture. What was that like? What, what were those people going through? What, what's the background of what was happening in the scriptures and, and, and the lives of the characters and the people? And you know what that gives you? It gives you context, but it also gives you insight and it gives you a new appreciation for what God done. And it says this. Then it also does this. It's like, you know what? If he done that for them, guess what he can do for me? Right? Against all odds, against all hopes. He shows up. And he shows out. And he does so much greatness that it just blows our mind. Right? And so, so as I, I was thinking about Hanukkah and just thinking about what God done. And I was like, man, it's not a lot different from what we're living in today. Right? It's not a lot different from the world today, but He's still the same God. And He's still the God that loves us. And He's still the God that came um, to be for us. Amen? So I'm almost done. I see the communion back there. So I'll try to shut up in time. So I was watching another football game where the team actually won. <laughs> and I was watching that thing, man. Anybody watch the Clemson Ohio State game? And it looked bad for Clemson. I mean the first first half, man, they were down sixteen to nothing. It looked like they weren't going to get anywhere. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's 16-14. And here they come storming back, right? And there's a, they have a quarterback. His name is Trevor Lawrence. And I love this kid, man. He's from, he's from the um, state of Georgia. He's not a peach, but, <laughs> but he's a, a really good football player. But I remember watching him during the season, and people were so hard on him because he was struggling. And, like, he would have trouble, and he was throwing more interceptions and than what people thought he should th throw, and they, he wasn't doing as good as they thought he should do, and so it looked pretty dark for that young man, and looked like there wasn't a whole lot of hope for that young man in the beginning of the season, if you listen to the media, but they were still winning, right? Winning's winning. I don't care if you win by one point. You hear what I'm saying? So he comes up, and this kid's supposed to be a throwing quarterback, and he takes off, and he's like running, man. He, 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 lo he looks like Jalen Hurts or... Or like an option, court, uh, you know, the, we used to do the wishbone. Russell Wilson. Yeah, Russell Wilson, there you go. 
just running through them, going here and going there. And they were playing with all their heart, right? And then he leads them back, and, and they end up winning the game. Afterwards, I watched the coach stand up, and he said, first of all, I want to give glory to God, and I want to thank him for, for the favor that he's bestowed upon me. And I thought, wow, how awesome is that? That's amazing that someone would, would come up and, and, and give God the glory on that stage like that. And then I watched this kid get up, and, he, and they're asking him a few questions. And he goes, yeah, he goes, there's a scripture, and it's in Ephesians 3.20. And I was like, you go. And I thought about this young man who had went through all this criticism. Man, he's a good quarterback. He should have been probably in the Heisman talk, too. But he went through all this stuff at the beginning of the season, then comes and shows up on the, one of the biggest stages in college football. And when he gets done, he's not saying, hey, look at me. How good am I? He's saying, guess what? I have a God, and guess what he says? And do you know what he says in, in Ephesians 3.20? Do you know what that says? It says this. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than, more than all we ask or imagine. Now think about that. I love to quote this scripture, and I know a lot of believers love to quote this scripture, right? The, the Maccabees back during Hanukkah, they saw that with their own eyes that God's able to exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And I hear that quoted all the time, right? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, that's like, that's like you get into the football locker room at halftime and they're, they're giving you that pep talk and they're like, you can beat them. You can beat them even though you're down 63 to 28. You can beat them. <laughs> right? When I hear that, that's what I think. I'm getting a pep talk, man. I don't care what the score is. I don't care what it looks like. My God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. If I need oil to last, He's going to make it last not just one day, not just two, but eight days. He's going to do whatever it takes to get me through. And I know He's that good of a God. And I've heard this quoted, and I've quoted this forever and ever and ever. And it's just the last few years, I forget that I've got to read on. Right? It's not bad. Like, remember, I was talking about if you take the text out of context, all that's left is a con. Right? Well, I want to know the full breadth, the full extent, the full context of what he's saying. And there's a key that's inside that that will turn and unlock a lot of things in our lives. And and it's this right here. Now, to him who was able to do immeasurably more than than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. Now there's a mouthful right there. According to His power. You know what that young man was saying? He's like, he's like he was probably like David. He goes, I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. Because it's not about what, what's, what I'm doing, but it's about that power that's living inside me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. The light of the world lives inside me, and it can't help but shine. Jesus said, it said if you hide your, your light under a bushel, like you remember that little song too that come from that scripture? This little light of mine. I'm not going to sing because you'll run me out of here. Right? Right? Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. Right? Where did that come from? It's that you can't, when you get, get so full of the love and realize how powerful the King of Kings who lives inside you is, guess what? You cannot hide that under a bushel. It's just going to come out and you're not even going to mean that. You hear what I'm talking about? You're just like, man, I can't stand that person. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Why? Because it's not in your strength and it's not in your power, but it's in something that's living inside you. It's not something that's someone. Grace isn't an object. It's a person, and His name's Jesus. Peace isn't an object. It's a person. 
and his name's Jesus. You want grace, you want peace, you're going to find it in one person, and his name's Jesus. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life, and he's your door to the Father. And when you find that, you find that, you know something? There's a power at work within me. And according to that power that's working within me, there's nothing impossible. There's nothing that I can't face. There's nothing that's going to come to me that's going to be a surprise to him. Like, he's like, man, I didn't see that coming. Sorry, James. (laughs) Right? Because he's so big and he's so good and he loves us that much. So I want to encourage you. You're not alone. You have a power inside of you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside you. And so you can go into this new year. Say, you know something? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And watch what God does through you, no matter what situations you're looking at. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for your peace and for your love and for your sacrifice. And we give you the praise and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.